and welcome here to more Talk FCB and welcome back to the Champions League. It is time now for the quarterfinal stage and that's the beauty right now of this Champions League format. All of the games, they're coming around so, so quickly. It is really, really intense and now we're getting down to the business end of this competition. There's just eight teams remaining. We've got Atalanta, PSG, RB Leipzig, Atletico Madrid, Manchester City, Lyon, Barcelona and Bayern Munich. And there are some absolutely incredible games to come. We're discussing it all in today's video, along as well with some predictions, which I have to say, in the last round, my predictions weren't too bad, if I may say so myself. It's all coming up in today's video, guys. Get ready for this. It's the Champions League. <laughs> If we do start here with Wednesday's fixture, because like I say, the beauty as well of this Champions League format is that we get one match each night. And of course, all of these games are one-off ties. Atalanta against PSG kicks us off. And I've got to say, what better way to kick off the quarterfinal stage? It is an absolutely incredible matchup, this one. I think you've got two teams there who love to go forward, love to be expressive. You've got Atalanta, who've been scoring goals for fun in Serie A. Honestly, absolutely incredible there. They are in the final third and they've had a brilliant brilliant season and the amazing thing about Atalanta and the way they actually differ very significantly from Paris Saint-Germain is that actually they've done all of this on a pretty tight budget they've been very very intelligent in the transfer market and I think it's a fantastic story and could they go even further in the Champions League this season honestly who knows they dispatched Valencia very very easily in the last round that all happened there before the lockdown they've been able now to plan for this game for quite a while and I think for PS PSG, there's so much pressure on them. They are coming into this game as the clear favourites. They're aware of that. PSG at times, when the pressure is on, they don't always deal with it in the best way. But potentially this time around, they'll be more ready. They've had a long time as well to think about this game, to prepare for this game. Thomas Tuchel has been really, really working on the right setup. Of course, there are question marks over the fitness there of Kylian Mbappe coming into this game. But of course, they've got Neymar. Neymar is going to be the man who's going to have to step up. This is why they brought him to Paris Saint-Germain and it's very very similar to Ronaldo at Juventus. Juve brought Ronaldo in to secure the Champions League title. It's nothing there to do with the league title. They had that wrapped up anyway and it's the same sort of situation with PSG when they paid all of that money to sign Neymar. Same with Mbappe. They want this trophy but can they get it? Can they get over the line? They're in a half of the draw there that should allow them to progress to the Champions League if they beat Atalanta here. They've got the winner there of Atletico or RB Leipzig. It's it is opening up for them, but they have to handle that pressure. They have to handle the responsibility, and it will be interesting to see how they handle Atalanta's attack. Because I do have to say, along with the attacking side of PSG, the brilliant free-flowing football that we all associate with Paris Saint-Germain, what Thomas Tuchel has done with this team is made them more solid at the back. And I think PSG needed to do that. They can't be open in this game. They can't go and concede goals in a one-off game like this, because it gives you very, very little time there to recover from a mistake. They have to be ready and they have to perform. But will they? On Thursday, we have another outstanding matchup, I feel. It's RB Leipzig there coming up against Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid team. And like I say, on paper, that's a really, really nice combination there of two teams who are looking basically to just keep punching above their weight. RB Leipzig had a really, really good tournament. They played well in the group stage. They played really, really well in the round of 16 stage there against Tottenham. They too dispatched them with ease. They got into this round very, very simply. And for Atletico Madrid, after beating Liverpool, you've got to say here, coming into this game, they're the favourites in this tie. I think when you knock out there the reigning champions, just like they did there, they went to Anfield, they didn't just knock Liverpool out, but they did it there in a really emphatic way. And it really has kick-started Marcos Llorente's Atletico Madrid career. He went there as a midfielder who wasn't really playing under Simeone. Now he's actually developed there into a sort of shadow striker, playing there just off the centre forward, playing in behind, and he has chipped in with a few very, very important goals. And it is going to be 
going to be interesting coming into this game, of course, because for RB Leipzig, no Timo Werner. And I think that's a massive blow. I don't think there you can really express how big of a blow that's going to be for this Leipzig side. Because obviously, under Nagelsmann, they've been brilliant. They've been so organised. They've got that three at the back system. They can be so, so flexible in the way they play. But I think everything was planned there around Werner. The runs of Werner, the positions on the field that he takes up, and Kunku on the left-hand side was constantly picking him out and providing assists there and chances for him. And I think without him, he's gone to Chelsea, of course. It is going to be tough without a signing coming in immediately to fill that void. And for that reason, I think Atletico Madrid are rightly favourites. They've had a few problems in the build-up to this game because of the coronavirus. But this game right here, I do feel... It should be a good one. Friday night, though, does bring us the biggest clash, by far and away the biggest, of the quarterfinal. But admittedly, I am quite biased. It's Barcelona against Bayern Munich. And honestly, what more do you want from a quarterfinal game? Two excellent teams, two historic teams in the Champions League. Got some of the best players the world has seen out there on the field coming head to head. And it should be fascinating because going into the game, I think for the first time in a long, long time, Barcelona are going to be underdogs in a game like this. And for me, as a Barcelona, Van, that will be a bit strange. I think, to be honest, though, I will accept that. I think Bayern this season have been very, very impressive. Barcelona haven't really got going under Valverde, now under Setien as well. Things off the field haven't exactly helped us. If you're looking in there from the outside, you're thinking probably Barca have got great players. Why isn't it really working? But there's a lot more going on there behind the scenes. But in this game, like I say, a one-off match, anything can happen. Bayern are the form team. They've got incredible players. I think Lewandowski is having an unbelievable season. The best season of his career and all around him you've got so much quality you've got Nabry you've got Coleman there the two wide players you've got Alfonso Davies bombing on there from left back you've got a midfield there full of players who can impact games and I think it's going to be really really interesting to see how the game goes in terms of the two teams coming up against each other because Barcelona would usually dominate the ball who will be on the counter attack in this game what sort of spaces are going to be left there in behind the two back fours and it's going to be so so fascinating to see how it pans out two Excellent teams, but only one can make it through. Who will that be? Last but not least, though, on Saturday, it will be there. Manchester City coming up against Leon, And this as well, it's a very interesting game. Because on the face of it, you're probably saying, look, Man City, big, big favourites. One of the biggest favourites, of course, to go on and win this competition. You'd expect them there to dispatch Leon, who haven't exactly had a brilliant season in Liga 1. But then you look at the way Leon played, not only in the second leg, but also there, of course, in the first leg against Juventus. They knocked them out there. That was a massive, massive win for them. And again, in these one-off games, you don't know what'll happen. If Leon come into this game and score first, you just don't know. You don't know how teams are going to react in these very strange times in a different format. It is certainly all there to play for. But obviously Man City, they will have the confidence. They dispatch Real Madrid. I don't think they were ever in doubt. I think they were very confident in that game. They remained nice and calm, nice and composed. They always kept control of that tie. And I think in this game, of course, they have the players, they have the coach to get past Leon. And if they get past Leon, then they're going to be facing the winner of Barca against Bayern. It doesn't exactly get any easier for Man City, but in a very similar situation here to Paris Saint-Germain, whereby this is the trophy they desperately want. This is the trophy that Pep Guardiola is absolutely desperate for, and I don't think he's going to let his players here take their eye off the ball. Pep will be saying, you've got to stay focused. Leon are a good team. They can cause us problems. We can't afford to take them lightly, and that's what Pep's going to be saying to his players, no doubt about that. And Leon, on the other hand, they're just going to be coming into this and think, you know what? Let's just go for it. We got this far. We probably didn't expect to beat Juventus, but we did that. We showed that we do have the quality to play at this level. So now we're here. We've made it to Lisbon. Let's just go for it. And that's what should make all of these one-off games very, very exciting and also unpredictable. But of course, when it does come down to it, guys, like I say, there can only be one winner in each of these matchups. And now that's why it's time to move on to my predictions ahead of this game. Starting there with Atalanta against Paris Saint-Germain. I think this is a game that you can expect goals. Two teams there who will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. So much attacking quality. And that's why I'm going to go for five goals in total in the game and just about going Paris Saint-Germain's way. I don't think it's going to be an easy victory for them. I think Atalanta are going to put up a real, real fight. But I'm going to go there. PSG 3, Atalanta 2. And in the other game there from their side of the draw, 
I'm also going to back Atletico Madrid to go through against RB Leipzig. I think that game is going to be slightly different. I don't think there's going to be a lot of goals. I think it's going to be cagey. I think both teams there will think, you know what, we don't really want to lose this game. I wouldn't be all that surprised to see RB Leipzig against Atletico Madrid there go to extra time, just like it did there with Atletico Madrid against Liverpool. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see it go there past 90 minutes. But in the end, I think Atletico just about, with a Simeone factor in this one-off game, they will go through. Then, Man City to beat Lyon. I think Lyon again, just like Atalanta, they will put up a fight. They're not going to be easy opponents. I really, really respect what they did against Juventus. But for me, Man City in the end, with that desperation and the players they have, they will have too much for Lyon in this game. I'm going to go Man City 3, Lyon 1. And just like before, I'm not going to give you my Barca buy-in prediction. I'm going to leave that until closer to the time. But what I will say is, I think both teams in this game are going to score. I think they're both going to have their chances in front of goal. And I do think on the night, there is going to be goals. Which way will it go? Well, that's up to you. Let me know your predictions in the comments down below. Who are you expecting to progress here past the quarterfinal stage? Who is your final four? Let me know all of those thoughts and those predictions in the comments down below. And of course, plenty more to come. So much more content ahead of all these clashes. I will see you soon, guys. Thanks as always for your support. But until next time, as always, Vishka, El Barca. Oh, 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 oh.